In this video, you'll see how to maximize engagement with next best action recommendations using Amazon Personalize. With this feature of Amazon Personalize, you can create solutions that predict the next best action for each user of your application, update and adapt recommendations in real time, and promote loyalty and increased revenue. Amazon Personalize is a fully managed machine learning service that helps organizations create dynamic, highly personalized user experiences in real time, driving improvements in customer engagement and conversion. It allows developers to quickly build and deploy curated recommendations and intelligent user segmentation at scale. Here's how it works. First, add data to Amazon Personalize, either by uploading it directly through an API or by pointing Amazon Personalize to an Amazon S3 bucket. Next, create a solution using the recipe that matches your business need. Next, tune recommendations based on your business context, such as new item bias or specific business metrics like revenue, watch time, or profit. Finally, access recommendations through a real-time API, which can be easily integrated with your application. With Next Best Action, you define actions that are eligible for recommendation, such as enrolling in loyalty programs, signing up for a newsletter or magazine, exploring a new category, or downloading an app. Next Best Action ranks actions based on the propensity of a specific user, and if the data is available, which actions will maximize value to the business. Next Best Action then explores actions until the action interaction threshold is met, and then retrains. Let's take a look. We'll begin in the Amazon Personalize console. To get started with next best action, we must first create a dataset group. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll use custom resources. Now that the dataset group is created, we'll need to create two mandatory datasets for working with next best action, the actions dataset, and the item interactions dataset. We'll start with the actions dataset, which captures metadata about the actions we want to recommend to our users. First, we'll name the dataset and verify the action schema. The schema definition includes a unique action ID for each action. The creation timestamp establishes the age of the action so Amazon Personalize can adjust recommendations accordingly. The value is the business value or importance of each action. An action's value can be between 1 to 10, where 10 is the most valuable action possible in the data set. Value data is one of several inputs used to determine the best action to recommend to users. We can also define categorical metadata such as seasonality or action exclusivity, to influence the next best action. The expiration timestamp specifies the date at which an action is no longer valid. Repeat frequency data specifies how many days Amazon Personalize should wait to recommend a particular action after a user interacts with it. When we click Next, the dataset will be created. In the meantime, we'll create the dataset import job. We'll store the data in this Amazon S3 location. For demonstration purposes, we've already uploaded data here. Next, we'll enter the IAM role ARN so Amazon Personalize can access the S3 bucket. Now we'll start the import. Let's take a quick look at the data we're importing. In this example, there are 12 actions. The table lists the action ID, timestamp, value, and metadata for each action. The expiration timestamp and repeat frequency aren't set. We also have the corresponding action interaction data, which we will import in a few moments. This table shows the user ID associated with each session where a user interacted with a particular action. The event type data indicates whether the action was viewed, taken, or not taken by the user. 
For example, if a user was offered an action called Apply Credit Card and they applied for the credit card, then the event type would be taken. If they declined that offer, the event type would be not taken. Let's go back and configure the Item Interactions dataset. An item interaction is an interaction between a user and an item in our catalog. For example, if a user clicks a particular item and then likes the item, Amazon Personalize can use these events as training data. We'll create a new schema for a typical retail use case. Each item interaction consists of a user ID, item ID, timestamp, event type, and any additional data about the interaction, such as categorical metadata. We'll specify the same IAM role and then start the import. At this point, we have imported the two mandatory datasets and can begin training the model. If we have action interactions data to add to the mix, the model can give more meaningful recommendations. For this example, we have an action interactions dataset, so let's import it. Again, we'll use a typical schema, where each action interaction consists of a user ID, action ID, timestamp, event type, and any additional data about the interaction, such as categorical metadata. Let's create the dataset and prepare the import job. The item interactions dataset is active and the others are in progress. We can monitor their progress on the datasets page. Let's view the actions dataset. The dataset is active and the import job is still in progress. Now that all three datasets are imported and active, we can create a solution to train the model. For the solution type, we'll select Action Recommendation, which predicts the actions users will most likely take. The pre-configured recipe is called AWS Next Best Action. Under Hyperparameter Configuration, we'll retain the default action optimization period, which looks at the next 14 days when predicting the next best action for a user. Let's create the solution. We can view the solution on the Solutions and Recipes page. The solution status is active. We can drill down to see the solution version metrics. The solution version can take up to 48 hours to create. For the purposes of this demo, let's switch to a solution version that has already been created with metrics. The metrics include normalized discounted cumulative gain, recall, precision, area under the curve, and coverage. The area under the curve metric indicates that the model is performing very well here. Precision, recall, and coverage indicate how many of the actions the model is able to predict. Now that we have the solution version, we can use it to create a campaign to generate real-time recommendations. For demonstration purposes, we've already created a campaign on this solution version, but let's quickly review the steps. First, choose the solution and the solution version. Next, specify the exploration weight and item age cutoff. For our campaign, we use the default configuration. Then create the campaign. Let's return to the existing campaign, which is already active. We'll test the campaign by generating recommendations for a fictitious user. These scores indicate that the user has a propensity to buy in Category 4. If we offer them a loyalty subscription and credit card application, they have a high likelihood of taking action on these offers.
We also can filter on action recommendations and action metadata. For example, this filter excludes the action ID where the action interaction event type is not taken. In other words, if a user doesn't show interest in a particular action, don't recommend that action to the user again. Similarly, this filter excludes the action ID according to specified metadata. In this case, if metadata 1 has a value of F, then don't show this recommendation. For the purposes of this demo, F represents a loyalty subscription. Let's retest the campaign using each filter in turn. First, we'll add the Action Not Taken filter. Behind the scenes, we've also added an interaction for this user where an offer for a loyalty subscription was not taken. Now, when we get recommendations, the loyalty subscription action is no longer shown. Let's remove the Action Recommendation filter and put in a different user. Four recommendations were generated. Now let's add the metadata filter. This time, the loyalty subscription is excluded because we excluded that particular action. In this way, you can get real-time next best actions based on custom criteria to maintain recommendation relevance. You've just seen how to maximize engagement with next best action recommendations. You can learn more about this topic in the description and links for this video. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.